In today's episode, we are going to touch upon a crucial topic of video quality metrics. I'm going to demo you how to measure top video quality metrics without having an expensive tool or doing extreme engineering. So stay tuned. If you are part of a team who strives to deliver the best quality video to your end customer and you don't have a mechanism to measure that, then this video is for you. Now, video quality is a debatable topic and it may vary person to person. But after all those transcoding effort, I'm sure you don't want to stream this to your end users. In this video, we are going to see some mechanisms that are going to help you detect such transcoding issues and fix them before delivering. So let's deliver this with confidence. This episode of CMF, we are going to dive into the world of video quality metrics and explore, explore the different metrics which are commonly used to measure the video quality in industry. We will also discuss why it is important to measure a video quality and how it can impact the viewing experience for the audience. I'm still your host Girish Nair and this is CMAF where I simplify cloud for media and future workloads. With the growing amount of video traffic on internet every year, coupled with viewers' heightened expectation for superior quality, video streaming services and platforms are faced with the challenge for providing high resolution and better quality at lower bandwidth. As a result, there is a pressing need for more efficient video coded standards and better methods to evaluate video quality. While several video quality assessment methods are available, the most widely accepted metrics are PSNR, SSIM, and VMF. All VQ metrics help you measure the difference between the original video signal and the compressed or the processed video signal. Now think of it in this way. When a video is compressed or processed, some information is lost in the process. VQ metrics measures how much information was lost comparing the compressed video to the original video. Now, some of the matrices works only on mathematics, but others work on human perception of quality. Now, let's find out which matrix is better and how these matrices work. First one is PSNR. Now, PSNR stands for Peak Signal to Noise Ratio and is a commonly used video metric. Now, how PSNR measures the information lost from the original video is by looking at the difference between two videos and calculating the ratio of the peak signal, which is the maximum possible value for a pixel in the original video, to the amount of noise present in the compressed video. In other words, the higher the PSNR value, the closer your compressed video is to the original video. Mathematically speaking, PSNR is an expression for the ratio between the maximum possible value of a signal and the power of distorting noise that affect the quality of the compressed video. The PSNR is usually expressed in terms of logarithmic decibel scale. For some instance, PSNR provides a better estimation than the VMAP and SSIM. This happens when video has undergone significant compression. As explained, PSNR mostly works on mathematical functions. It lacks capturing the perceived video quality by an audience. The second one is SSIM, which stands for Structural Similarity Index Measure. This is again a way to measure similarity between two videos. SSIM takes into account three different factors, luminance, contrast, and structure. Luminance, the luminance refers to the overall brightness of the video. Contrast refers to the difference between the light and dark areas of the video. And structure refers to the arrangement of objects and edges within the video. SSIM values range between 0 to 1, with 1 indicating a perfect match between two videos. SSIM is an excellent choice for applications like estimation of content-dependent distortion, capturing and measuring the impact of noise and capturing the blurring artifacts. SSIM is unique in its ability to measure the subjective loss of coding. For example, 
when encoding using H.264 with adaptive bitrate, H.264 will use a lower bitrate for smoothening the areas containing minor details. Now, PSNR may incorrectly score the actual quality here, whereas SSIM better correlates with subjective viewing. So, is SSIM the winner? Wait a bit, let's look at VMAF2. VF or Video Multi Method Assessment Fusion is a video quality metric developed by Netflix. This utilizes a combination of human vision modeling and machine learning to evaluate the quality of videos. Its popularity has grown due to its ability to partially or fully automate the subjective quality testing, which traditionally required human evolution and scoring. VMAF, along with FFmpeg, has become an essential tool for video processing and compression engineers. VMAF, when compared to other two metrizers, provides a different set of advantages, like VMAF is designed to better model human perception of video quality, which can provide more accurate results than metrizers like PSNR or SSIM that rely solely on mathematical equations. VMAF also provides better accuracy at most of the cases because it uses machine learning to learn from human judgment. VMAF can handle a broader range of video content, including HDR or high dynamic range. VMAF also allows users to customize its model and parameters to suit specific needs, making it more flexible tool for video quality and evaluation. However, it is important to note that no single quality metric is universally applicable. And even metrics with positive attributes like VMAF may not be effective in certain situations. We will be talking about this in our upcoming slides. Before going there, let's discuss about FFmpeg in a nutshell. FFmpeg is a powerful open source tool used for handling multimedia files such as videos, audios and images. It can be used to perform a wide range of tasks including converting video and audio formats, adjusting video quality and resolution, extracting frames from videos and much more. FFmpeg is a versatile tool that can be used by anyone from casual users to professional video editors and developers. It's also a frequently used tool in the backend of video sharing platforms and streaming services to manage, process multimedia files efficiently. VMAF with FFmpeg is a common video quality practice followed in the industry. It may get a bit tedious to correctly set up VMAF models in FFmpeg, but I will leave a link of detailed insertion steps in the description. Since VMAF with FFmpeg has a steep learning curve to get started, I am introducing you to FFmetrix. FFmetrix is a UI plus command line tool that analyzes video quality metrics. It internally do pens use FFM by the way. Isn't it obvious from the name itself? FF metrics can be used to compare two different versions of the same video or to assess the quality of video compressed using different codecs, bit rates, and resolution. It can also be used to optimize video quality settings and to ensure that the video meets certain quality thresholds before being published or distributed. It works with the three major metrics we discussed in the session, that is PSNR. VMAF and SSI. So let's see FF metrics in action. So this is my EC2 instance, and I have installed all the software required for this demo. You can download the FF metrics from the link provided in the description. Just unzip it and start using it. I have created a shortcut in my desktop. You have to download the FF metric and add it to your path variables. I have already done that. So let me open the FF metrics. The FF metric control looks like. You need two files to start comparing. One is the reference file. Let me browse and use my reference file. All my transported content is in the network shared storage. Let me compare it with the transported 1080 file. 
once you add both the files you can start analyzing before that select which matrices you want to test because we have learned all three of them let's select all three of them and click on start as you can see first it will analyze the psnr then the ssim and last mean f well this is going to take a lot of time let it run and let me show you the results in the end wasn't that simple but this is simple and convenient way to compare your video quality you can automate this by using the cli commands to conclude effort metric analyzes video quality metrics using three matrices such as psnr ssim and vmf effort metrics can provide insight into the video quality of content effort metrics provides insights into the quality of video content and help improve the overall user experience FF metric is a valuable tool to have it in your arsenal for assessing and improving the quality of video content. We talked about PSNR and how PSNR helps you to derive the video quality of the compressed video. PSNR normally ranges between 30 to 60 and close larger the value better the video quality. We also touched about SSIM which varies between 0 to 1 where 1 means the compressed video is exactly similar to the actual video last but not the least was vmap again in vmap larger the value better the quality and as discussed in the session the unique feature about vmap that differentiate it from traditional metrics such as psnr and ssim is that vmap can help you mimic a quality perceived by the viewers vmap was originally meant to compare video quality of videos transcoded in different codecs and resolutions but today we are increasingly seeing VMAF being used to compare transcoders. And transcoders over the period of time has learned to optimize their enhancements to throw better VMAF score by manipulating their content, which may not be the right indicator of your best quality. To disregard this enhancement gain, VMAF NEG was introduced, where NEG stands for No Enhancement Gain. When comparing two encoders, I recommend you to use NEG mode to access the pure effect coming from the compression. Now, encoder selection is not a frequent thing that you do. So before taking any encoders to production based on just these metrics, I recommend you to do a side-by-side -side comparison of videos. Tools like Telestream Switch Pro can help you compare two videos played side-by-side -side and also compare the quality by sliding the slider. Hope you got a good insight into the video quality metrics and how to measure them. If so, like, share and subscribe. Leverage VQ metrics, tools and encoders wisely and deliver the best quality videos to your end user. Happy streaming!